Secularists claim they want equality with white heterosexual Christian men. Do they really? You can speak imprecisely about white Christian men, you can accuse them of anything, and they're required to be man enough to deal with it and take responsibility for their mistakes. I'm not gonna entertain the lie that progressive secular elites, whether they're black, Jewish, LGBTQ, or feminists, wield no power in the United States. Miss me with that trope. Denial of the mass power they've collected is just one of the many lies they use to avoid accountability. Minority groups who have previously been victimized have weaponized the victimization of their ancestors to accrue power and uproot the foundational tent poles that made America great. What's happening to Kanye West and Kyrie Irving is a show of force, a display of secular Hollywood's nuclear power. Welcome, welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Uh, happy Tuesday uh, to you and yours. I hope you can tell that I look better after three weeks without a haircut. I finally got in to see my barber and got my hair cut today. Uh, I'm still wearing these pullovers and hoodies uh, because I, I'm still in between clothes and everything. So, but at least my hair looks good. I'm gonna start dressing better at some point or dressing the way I used to at some point, but right now the best I can do is get a haircut, take a shower most days, and come in here and do this show. Uh, I am so happy uh, about today's show. Bryson Gray is uh, back in studio with me. Uh, Bryson, welcome back. Great to have you. Thank you for uh, having me. We're, we're going to have uh, Delano Squires and Royce White in this show as well. And as you can tell from the cold open, we're going to deal with a very, very ticklish, and might I say devilish topic. Uh, and, and I'm going to get us rolling with a, a mono right off the bat, unscripted, just me talking to you, trying to set up this conversation. And, and then we'll get into the full discussion of the show with Bryson and Delano and, and Royce White. Uh, but let, let's start here. Let's start with what's going on with Kyrie Irving. He, he's kind of the new fresh face of what I believe is a war of secularists, people who do not believe in God of all stripes versus people who have a faith in God. We may not all share the same faith, but we have a faith in God. And so before I get all the way off into this topic, I, I wanna state something about my faith and anybody that's watched this show, this will not be news to you, but I just wanna enter it into the record before we get rolling. I believe the greatest person to ever visit the planet Earth was a man named Jesus Christ, and he was a Jew. Let me be crystal clear. I believe the greatest person to ever visit this planet was Jesus Christ, and it's my belief he was a Jew. I also, if you've followed this show, followed my life and the decisions I've made, I keep making more and more decisions in my life based on my belief in Jesus Christ, this Jew, and me trying to live a life that glorifies and honors Jesus Christ, a Jew. I do not have any problem with Jewish people. I'm living a life in service to someone I believe was a Jew and was the greatest person to ever visit this planet. My life is in service to him. Am I flawed? Absolutely. Have I made all kinds of mistakes and done foolish things that contradict my beliefs? Yes, I have. But my life is dedicated to Jesus Christ in this moment. And over the last few years, I've been making incredible decisions, decisions that to some don't make sense. 
but I'm trying to live a life in service to him. So I've entered that into the record, who I'm serving, what I believe in. And so from this point forward, the rest of this discussion, if some of the things I believe are facts, if they hurt your feelings, I'm gonna ask you to consult with Ben Shapiro and his philosophy on facts. Facts don't care about your feelings. We all have to deal with facts. And so me, and again, I'm a Christian. This other part of me that I'm about to mention is some surface level BS that the rest of the world cares about. But I'm also black. That's some surface level BS that other people care. I'm a Christian, but people care about my blackness. I'm black. There are things that are said about black people. There are things that I have said about black people that don't serve my feelings, but I got to deal with the facts. And if we have a rotten culture that's called hip hop, that's then called uh, uh, black culture, and it's a rotten, secular, Satanist culture, and it's killing young black men, and we're doing it, black people. Those are facts that I have to deal with. Those facts don't care about my feelings. Now, here's some additional facts as it relates to this conversation. And today, we've all heard the news about the popular rapper Takeoff uh, from the group Migos. He was killed in Houston. And I'm once again, like this whole rap profession and rap music, and I, this was allegedly over some dice game or whatever, but this whole sick culture that pulls out a gun and kills young black men indiscriminately, it has to be called out. And this hip hop industry that uses black rappers in partnership, in partnership with men like Lior Cohen, a Jewish man, in the music industry. They got to be called out, the black rappers and the executives at the top. And I'm not going to sit here and go th down this lane of, oh, it's a trope, it's a trope, it's a trope. And anytime you mention, hey, uh, there's some Jewish people that have an immense level of power in Hollywood, in the music industry, oh, that's a trope, that's a trope, that's a trope. And then I get on the internet and just start doing oh, a trope. Like, like this isn't, and I'm reading books that, uh, what was the book I said? Their uh, Empire of Their Own, uh, How Jews Invented Hollywood. That's a book that I didn't write. I believe it's written by a Jewish man. No one's criticizing him. He wrote that book about how Jews invented Hollywood. When I go to Wikipedia, I don't know, if, maybe Wikipedia is anti-Semitic. I don't know, but they have a long uh, post about Jewish influence in rhythm and blues. And one of the subsections is Jewish owned record companies and promotion of African American artists. Jewish composers, musicians, and promoters had a prominent role in the transition from jazz to swing to doo-wop and rock and roll in American popular music of the 1950s while Jewish businessmen founded many of the labels that recorded rhythm and blues during the height of the vocal group era. According to Israeli Jew historian Art Kazatora, I think is his name, although only 2% of the total U.S. population was Jewish, their representation in the music industry was much higher. That ain't me. That's Art Kazatorza. That's Wikipedia. For, further along, they said Jewish entrepreneurs started s scores of independent record companies between the 1940s and 1960s. Many of them focused on black popular music and promoting black talent with their new vocal group sound. Although black owned independent labels competed with the Jewish owned indie labels in the rhythm and blues era, Jewish entrepreneurs had access to a wide network in popular entertainment. Oh, perhaps it's connected to 
the fact that they invented Hollywood. I'm not saying any of this with some negative slant. Hats off to them. Great job inventing Hollywood. Great job building music labels and record labels that made money. I applaud it. But I'm not going to deny that it happened. I'm just sorry, I'm not. I applaud it. I'm not going to deny that it happened and that they have a lot of influence over black music. This, I'm just going to continue reading from Wikipedia. Running an independent label in rhythm and blues in the early rock and roll era was practically, this is Wikipedia, practically a Jewish business niche. Prominent Jewish entrepreneurs included Herb Abramson of Atlantic, Jules Bahari of Modern, Al Green of National, Florence Greenberg of Apollo, Herbin Lubinsky of Savoy, Sid Nathan of King, Art Rupi of Specialty, and High Weiss of Old Town. None of this stuff I'm saying is said as a pejorative. It's facts. And if those facts hurt your feelings, take it up with Ben Shapiro. Now that we've entered that into the record, I serve a Jewish king, Jesus Christ. This music industry, black entertainers, and what I call progressive secular Jews have a partnership in this industry. And it's producing something toxic that needs to be talked about and addressed. Because at the foundation, of this discord that we keep seeing play out between black celebrities, Kanye West, Dave Chappelle, now Kyrie Irving, hip hop and the music industry is at the root of it. A lot, pe I'm a, let's, let's delve into Kyrie Irving and, and my, my whole issue here. Kyrie Irving playing an NBA game last night, a group of fans, uh, set courtside wearing fight anti-Semitism because Kanye tweeted out uh, Hebrews to Negroes, some documentary, three and a half hour documentary that basically airs the uh, Hebrew is black Israelite narrative on Judaism and all that. I tried to watch the documentary. I got about 75 minutes in. The documentary is straight garbage. It's uninteresting. It's not compelling. It's some dude just kind of reading some stuff. There's nobody other th that could make it more than 15 minutes unless they were trying to punish themselves. The documentary is harmless because it's uninteresting and uncompelling and put together in a way that only a tiny hit the guy, whoever put it together and his family and friends are probably the only people that could watch it start to finish. But let's say it was compelling. And let's say it was, and again, because I only made it 75 minutes in, I couldn't figure out where the anti-Semitism started. I'll take Rolling Stone and everybody else has written about it and read the book, or I'll take their word for it. But damn it, you got to explain to me why Kyrie Irving is on the front lines if this documentary is this anti-Semitic? Why is Kyrie Irving on the front line and not Jeff Bezos and Amazon? Kyrie Irving's not gonna make a dime off of this documentary. Kyrie Irving didn't put the documentary together. He didn't put it on Amazon. And so this whole outrage over Kyrie Irving seems completely dishonest to me. Because if this documentary is as negative and as harmful as they're arguing, why wouldn't you take it up with Jeff Bezos and Amazon? That's who platformed it. That's who's profiting from it. But nobody has smoke for Jeff Bezos, a basketball player who retweeted a graphic image with no words. He retweeted a graphic in, image, as far as I know, and he's taken the tweet down, but my memory was, he didn't put it anywhere like, oh my God, this is the greatest documentary ever. 
oh, you got to see this is must see TV. He didn't do none of that. He retweeted the graphic image that was probably taken from Amazon and Jeff Bezos's corporation. But nobody has a problem with Jeff Bezos. Those people that ESPN put on TV last night, sitting courtside and interviewing them and demanding that Kyrie Irving be whipped and beaten and further punished. Are they at Amazon headquarters today? Do they have anything to say to Jeff Bezos, the man who's profiting from the documentary, who platformed the documentary? Miss me with the BS. If this documentary was as anti-Semitic and as dangerous as everybody's saying it is, people would be irate with Jeff Bezos, not a basketball player. This is hot garbage. At the root of all of this, I'm just telling you, there's a form of music called hip hop, gangster rap, whatever, that is and again, if this documentary that is hot garbage and maybe a hundred people will watch, if it's dangerous and harmful and, and such a threat to, to Jewish people, what we as black people, what should we say about hip hop music? Hip hop doesn't have a hundred viewers. It, it's, it's got a worldwide audience that sucks it up daily. This documentary won't be played at halftime of the Super Bowl, but Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg were. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg were platformed in front of 100 million Americans and the entire world at halftime of the Super Bowl being celebrated for a style of music and they made it. Satanic and denigrates black people. But Kyrie's the bad guy and, and Kyrie must be shut down and he must be silenced. Again, now, I serve a Jew. This here, what, what we're seeing with Kyrie and this whole situation with Kanye West and all of it. And anybody that watches this show knows I'm very reluctant to play the race card. Anybody that follows me. But this screams like, you better get back in your place. Kyrie, you are a Negro and you better know your place. Don't tweet out this stuff. Now we're not gonna say a word to Jeff Bezos, but your black ass better not open up your Twitter feed again with any of this garbage. This is at the root of the problem. You can put out this music. You can be the record executives putting out this music. Nobody has anything to say to you. You get a free pass the same as Jeff Bezos. It seems like there's only one group that has to answer for this garbage. And trust me, I've been catching heat for 30 years for calling out the group of black artists that participate in this. I'm an equal opportunity caller of BS as it relates to hip hop music. My smoke ain't just for the executives, it's for everybody involved. I'm on record with it. You can go read all my columns over the last 25 years. It's filled with criticism of this industry and the satanic music they put out and the, de the denigration of black people that they put out and profit from. But we got smoke for Kyrie. And, and I, I'm sitting here as a black man and I can't say, well, oh, how come none of these white folks can't catch no smoke? How come none of the secular Jewish, how come Lear Cohen can't catch the smoke? L let's play the clip of Lear Cohen on The Breakfast Club justifying this satanic music that he puts out when he was questioned by Charlemagne the Fraud. Play the clip. I don't know what's this opioid thing, man. Is, is well, being a crackhead wasn't cool you, back then. Being what? a crackhead wasn't cool. 
Now it's they, they seem like they're they're making it cool to be drinking lean and syrup and it's the most dangerous it's the most dangerous and... thing that's facing um um our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um b- because I, I I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um she asked me talent or issues and I said talent. But I, I, I have to, I, I can't give up on people. But I'm saying that's hypocritical, though. You're saying um, the it's opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got, I got people to feed. <laughs> um, oh, I got a, bi- I got a, I got a business to run. <laughs> You're gonna make Dame Dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture. Who's Dame Dash? I want to play another clip from Charlemagne the Frog. And, and, and I'm going to let other people into this conversation, but Charlemagne the Frog sat down with uh, Vlad TV, that, that fed spy Vlad that loves to get black dudes to come on his show and snitch on himself. And, and so he got Charlemagne to come on and snitch on himself. Here's a two minute clip. And, and again, this is, this is what I, we as black people love to talk about all oh, the white man, the white man got his foot on our neck. All oh, the white man doing X, Y, and Z. Charlemagne ain't afraid of the white man. Watch this clip. He's about to tell you who he's afraid of. Crystal clear, watch the clip. I love Jewish people, but they're powerful. I don't want them to misconstrue anything I'm saying or take anything I'm saying the wrong way. So I would much rather not even have this conversation. I have a lot of great Jewish people in my corner. I have a Jewish, I have a Jewish conglomerate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm trying to think of the, the, the other Jewish rappers that we had on the list. There's, well, I think, uh, Asherah that's half Jewish. I think we put him in the list. Well, he needs to start claiming the whole Jews so he can start prospering. Because he's doing bad right now. I haven't really heard a lot of noise out of him. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thing, though, too. If you, if, you, if you are what you are, claim it, man. Especially if you're Jewish. And, and then you start kind of running out of people. I mean, there is uh, this Necro, I believe. You know why? Because... MC Search? Search? Listen, I, I didn't know he was, but the problem is, like, you know why there's not a lot of Jewish rappers? Because there's Jewish owners and Jewish CEOs. They run these labels. <laughs> They're the bosses. That's why. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> well, what did Kanye say? He said, uh, happy Kwanzaa to all the artists and- Happy Hanukkah to all the label execs. All the label execs. <laughs> it's the truth. They run, they run the business period from Hollywood to the music industry, everything. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a very powerful mafia. As they should be. You saw what happened to Mel Gibson when he went on his rap. He deserved that though. He's an asshole. Like I, I'm, I'm a stern believer, man. Like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't discriminate against anybody because of their race, because of their gender, because of their religion, because of their sexuality. So he deserved that. Whenever you, you know, pick out a whole race and say this race is effed up or this race is foul or this race is this and this race is that, you deserve whatever you get. See the problem with black people, we don't have no power. No matter what we do, we can all click up. We don't have no organization that has holds any weight. And don't you don't hold no weight. We don't have no organization that holds no weight. You can't speak bad about a Jewish person because they have organizations and they're a close-knit group of people in power who will bring you down. Same thing with gays. You can't say nothing bad about gays because they move as a unit. Black people don't have that. Not one ounce of fear expressed for the white man. He knows he can go anywhere he wants to say and say whatever he wants about the white man. He can say whatever he wants about me. Any, any man with Christian values, you can say whatever you want. You can generalize, call us the worst thing in the world. We're all colonizers. We're all uh, Trump supporters and closet white supremacists. You can say it all. But you just heard the man say, and it's a fact. Everybody's running around in fear of, oh my God, if you challenge the Jewish man in any way, I'm scared. Yes, sir, boss, I'm scared. And they're good with that. He just said all the same things. They run Hollywood and blah, blah, blah. But he expressed it with a tone of fear and deference. 
So they're very comfortable with that. And no one's trying to cancel Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God was involved with raping, allegedly, a young girl years ago. No problem, Charlemagne. You can keep your platform. You good. Because you express the proper amount of fear. We have you under control. We don't have Kyrie under control. We don't have Kanye under control. We don't have Dave Chappelle under control. So we're going to punish them. I serve a Jewish king. I got no problem with Jewish people. But everybody has to be held accountable for what they're doing. I'm not talking about all Jewish people, but we can't even have the conversation about the people at the top of the music industry, the people that books have said invented Hollywood, about how we're being treated in popular culture, how we're being denigrated, how we're being feminized, told to put on a dress. And if you won't, we'll run you off to, Afri uh, to Africa like they did Dave Chappelle. I, I won't make one, I'm going on longer than I wanted to, but I want to make one more point. Anscape, which is the website, used to be called The Undefeated, that I helped create. Guy that I hired there that I have respect for, Jesse Washington, wrote a piece for ESPN's Anscape about Kyrie Irving and how anti-Semitic Kyrie Irving is and, and how we can't tolerate this anymore. And I'm reading this and I'm like, Jesse is a good husband, a good father, a good man. I knew him as a good journalist. I like and respect Jesse Washington. But this is some hot garbage. And the why is because Jesse Washington made his bones as a hip hop journalist. This man knows the hip hop industry forward and backwards. I met him 25, 30 years ago when he was the editor at Vibe magazine and they contracted me to write a story about Allen Iverson. That's how far back I go with Jesse. This man knows the kind of poison that's being put out in hip hop music. He would never write a piece about the anti-black garbage in hip hop music. If he has, I haven't seen it. Maybe it's on Anscape or the undefeated, undefe or the undefeated, whatever it's called now. Maybe it's on there, but he hasn't. But we coming out of the closet to kill Kanye, I mean to kill Kyrie over a tweet on Jeff Bezos' site. These people, y'all speak truth to power, but Jeff Bezos and Amazon can make money off this thing that's so, so anti-Semitic, but not a word about Jeff Bezos. Let's go after Kyrie, a basketball player. Are you kidding me? Cowardice and deception has run amok in America. Uh, I, I, I want to stop for the moment because I, I want to. I want others to participate in the conversation and and because I, I literally and and maybe I should have just said you know I'll do the whole show by myself because I could go on for days about this. I'm loaded for bear. I serve the king of all kings. These clowns running or I don't know who they said. Well, they done told you who they serve. They're, they're, who they're afraid of. Do you understand? <clears throat> if Charlemagne was in his proper mind, that man would be sitting on TV somewhere saying, oh, God, I'm, I'm afraid to talk about Jesus. Because if I don't say the right thing about Jesus, whoo, God is going to be mad with me. And so let me be very careful because Jesus has all the power. And he works and his, but we don't talk that way anymore because we're, we have no fear of God. We have no belief in God. This whole country has been secularized and we serve the devil.
That's why there's no fear of God. No discussion of it. If you catch me anywhere at home, in text messages, on this show, anywhere talking about I'm afraid of anything other than God, slap the out of me. Because I didn't embarrass and disgrace my entire family and God. And I apologize for cussing. God's going to get me for that. But I, I was, they, they, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lit up right now. I'm, I'm on fire. Let me uh, tell you about my good friends at Good Ranchers. Uh, it's the holidays <clears throat> when our waists get bigger and our wallets get smaller. It's the season when most companies want you to spend all your money, but not good ranchers, not my good friends at Good Ranchers. Uh, beef prices are estimated to increase another 20% in 2023, but at Good Ranchers in the October feast, you can lock in your price through the life of your subscription. If you use my promo code, uh, Fearless, you can get their exclusive Black Friday offer of two free Black Angus New York Strip steaks. There are two 12 ounce porterhouse uh, quality cuts that will absolutely blow you away in flavor, and you can get them for free at goodranchers.com slash fearless. You'll inflation proof your meat and budget. Get $70 off Get $70 of free USDA choice steaks and save an additional $25 on every box when you subscribe. Thousands of five-star reviews show why so many people are ditching the high prices and low quality of their grocery store for Good Ranchers instead. Treat yourself or someone you love to Good Ranchers award-winning service and quality this holiday season. Remember to visit GoodRanchers.com fearless and use my promo code. You guys know I love Good Ranchers. You guys know as fearless soldiers, we need to support Good Ranchers because they support me, you, and us. They allow me uh, to do this type of show where we get to have discussions and conversations no one else will. We're gonna do that with Bryson Gray and Delano Squires next. It's my obligation, no hate, discrimination, raising up your hands for freedom. All right, welcome back. Uh, before we roll out to D.C. and bring Delano in, Bryson, I, I, want, I, I wasn't planning on ranting and raving for 30 minutes. Uh, I want if do you have a quick anything you want to add before we bring Delano into the conversation? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the one thing I do want to add just quickly is um, it's actually deeper than that. If you look at the black owned record label that they were speaking about, and this goes back to Ice Cube days, all these labels were bought out by these same secular Jewish people. So when somebody says because, you know, under the ADL um, saying that they have an immense amount of power is anti-Semitic. <laughs> I just don't get it, because it's not, I'm not even, it's just a re reflection of reality. I'm not saying that as a pejorative. And I'm a Sabbath keeper. I was just in Denver for Yom Kippur. So I keep all the feast days, I keep all the holidays. I go to a Messianic Jewish congregation. You can't really call me anti-Semitic, but you know, what you say, Ben Shapiro said, facts don't care about your feelings. Uh, Delano, uh, I saw on your, uh, Twitter feed this morning that uh, the story on Anscape uh, by Jesse Washington uh, caught your attention as it did mine. I, mm. I, I was, I read the story and sitting in a minute, and again, I know Jesse, I, I hired him. Uh, I have respect for Jesse. He grew up a hip hop journalist, ran Vibe mm -hmm. Magazine and other hip hop uh, magazines or what he knows what hip hop music and Jesse's a man of faith uh, but I, I, I I'm, I'm reading this article and I'm just like wow all this smoke for Kyrie none mm -hmm. for the hip hop industry Jason as I as I was tweeting it out I said I think this is the guy that Jason says that he he's known for a long time so let me give this a light hand a light touch because honestly, one, from a technical perspective, the article was garbage. 
it was garbage because like much of what is written by the professional journalistic feline class, it was heavy on, this is dangerous, this is a harm, um, this is a conspiracy theory, right? A lot of words that give you no information that are meant for the reader to turn off their mind and just um, relax into the arms of the person writing the, writing the column, as opposed to describing what a person said that's harmful, describing what a person said that's dangerous. Um, by the time you get to, down towards the bottom where he's trying to impugn Kyrie's character and say something to the effect of, you know, he, he refused the vaccine and so on and so forth, I, I took a screenshot of that and I said, this is completely discrediting for a journalist. It is 2022 and this guy is still pushing the notion that the jab, which is not a vaccine, that the COVID shot um, is going to save grandma's life or something like that. When the fact is the Nets came sniffing around Kyrie's barn because they had like eight guys out, out on COVID protocols. So from a technical perspective, again, it, I wouldn't even use it to line my, my cat's litter box. And I don't keep cats because I'm not a feline guy. That being said, my, res my primary response to Jesse Washington is I would love to see a single black social critic apply the same tools of analysis to hip hop. And I didn't even know that backstory in terms of him as a hip hop journalist. I, I, I search hip hop on his feed and I could see, you know, he, he it's like, oh, I love the game. I love NWA. And I said, OK, I got, I got enough to make my, my case. But when artists are saying, I'm going to shoot this N word, I'm going to smoke this N word when they when they're pointing their finger, you know, right, like like a like a long gun at the camera and talking about all the N words that they popped then that's just creative license, that's just music, it's lyrics, it doesn't matter. But when Kyrie, to your point, um, tweets or, or puts out an Instagram post that's just a, 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 an image of a film that's on Amazon, then this, these are dangerous anti-Semitic tropes and so on and so on and so forth. And my thing is this, I'm not a person, I, I believe that there's ethnic hatred, religious hatred, religious partiality, ethnic partiality that cuts a bunch of different ways. I, I acknowledge that. And if, and if and if somebody's out there saying I hate X group, regardless of who that group is and regardless of the person saying it, I say, look, this, this is not of God. Right. I can't call. I personally cannot call myself a Christian and hate the people that God has created. But that's not that's not what's going on here. These guys are in the business. Jesse Washington and his ilk are in the business of narrative management. That's that's their primary goal. Right. And I don't know who they take orders from. I, I actually hope for Jesse Washington's uh, case that he's actually taking orders from somebody because if this is how he actually thinks, him and everybody else, I could I could tick off the list of the people who over the last couple of weeks say that um, veiled quote unquote anti-Semitism is a bigger problem as it relates to the black community as outright and explicit uh, anti-black hatred that comes in the form of murder music, um, uh, self-destructive lyrics, degradation pushing abortion, so on and so on and so forth. I hope these people don't actually think that way. But but yeah, it, it was embarrassing. And as I said, we, Jason, there's way too many cats in the house. And, and I'm thankful for this show and for what you're doing and for this platform, because I know that if you get enough dogs in the house, that eventually even the cats will start barking. I, I'm going to share this. Not I'm, I'm not doing any of this to... I'm not sharing this to embarrass Jesse. I'm just providing more context why I was so shocked. And, and, and shocked may be too strong of a word because I know Jesse is a defender of hip hop. I've always found it contradictory because he's also a man of faith. I, I can't, the, the faith that I knew that he followed started with a B. Baha'i? Am I right? Have y'all heard of a faith yeah. called Baha'i? Yeah, yeah, I heard of it. He's, when, when I knew Jesse, that's what he was a practicing member of. I believe he still is. And, and so, but I knew he had this weird, passionate defense of hip hop. And, and, and I don't understand how anybody of faith, any kind of faith, Catholic, Baptist, Judaism, Islam, I, I don't know how anybody can defend hip hop at the commercial hip hop at this point. It, it's, it's a, I mean, from Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion scissoring on stage and talking about WAP mm -hmm. 
and the, the male rappers constantly talking about killing each other. Days low female rapper. I hate I'm a Nazi. Her, mm -hmm. How can you defend this? And then with the cherry on the top, the bodies that keep getting dropped. Yep. Take off just got killed. And again, it, 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 it is it a hip? Is it Biggie versus Tupac? No. But when you embrace that culture, mm -hmm. you got to be at the dice game. You, you, you got you to gotta keep a group of thugs around you to keep that authenticity. And, and so nobody's sitting here shocked, really shocked that Takeoff got killed. It's a possibility. It goes along with that genre of music. Bryce, and this is, I, help me out here. So it's, it's interesting, right? All these people make music about uh, murder, sex, drugs, gang. And I don't know if you saw, but Quavo had a story uh, last night, you know, after the party, there was ride with the guns, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we outside. Quavo, you know, Quavo was there. We'll take off, we'll take off, we'll take off that shot. You know, his story, we ride with the guns, we in the streets, we tapped in. You know what I'm saying? And then and then uh then takeoff ended up getting shot. This is the culture that these people created. And I don't me personally, I don't want to hear the RIP Quavos from the record labels. I don't want to hear from the rappers. I don't want to hear from the people that that's complicit in supporting this music either. And the reason why is because all y'all gonna do is go listen to a song about ten other black people dying anyway. How many black right. people gotta die until we wanna change? How right. many rappers gotta die until you like until, until you think maybe we should we should stop promoting this stuff? You know what mm. I'm saying? Because because you can promote that all day long. They promote it to you. They push it to you. People forget. This stuff get in your face because it is funded by the secular Jews, obviously. They're the people with the money. And it's funded to get pushed in your face. But if you Kyrie or you Kanye, you say something that's against the narrative, they strip Price it away. I, I, I want to be precise here, and I, I get your take. But let's don't pretend like Russell Simmons ain't part of the funding. He's not. Maybe a little bit. Listen. Let's all, come on, man. We're we're partners in the promotion of this I wickedness. Feel, I, I feel what you're saying, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to be very clear about what I'm saying. When you look at the roles these secular Jews people are talking about playing the music music roles, they're not artists. They never was artists. They're not creative thinkers. They, they hire people to go find the talent. They're the funders. They're the people that buy the record label. They're the ones that are giving you the budget. These budgets, Russell Simmons get a budget cut, and he tell you what to do with the budget. I'm, 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 <laughs> Got you. You know. I, I, it's hard for me to believe, though, that they're the only ones. And again, they may right. have an outsized influence, but d there's some white folks up in there. There's some, so, there's black, some black folks folk. up, up in Yeah. Jay-Z. I mean, I, there you go. <laughs> I'm thinking generally, so the majority. When I say majority, I'm actually talking about like a 95% 90, majority. And that's not, that's not even me saying it, just those over exaggerate. That's research anybody can look up, like 95% majority. So like you said, it's not all like 100% them, but, um, you know, percentages are percentages, yeah, and, facts. And, go ahead, and, D. And, and Jason, I, I, can, I can answer that question in terms of how people can justify it. It's very simple, right? It's, it's mammon. It's the love of money. And, and part of what we've gotten, and you get this on the black left and the black right, right, is the notion that as long as it's making somebody a lot of money, if it's creating black millionaires and, and billionaires and they give back to their community, then everything that comes with it is acceptable. And, and, and this is what people do when they don't have, um, you know, the right standards in terms of what they will accept and what and what they will not. And my thing is this part of the reason that Jesse Washington and and, you know, all the other defenders of hip hop, Mark Lamont Hill, Michael Eric Dyson, the people with three names, the professors, the politicians, the pundits, the preachers. Part of the reason that they're all in on it is because hip hop is not just rap music. Right. Yes, the executives get paid, but it's more than them to get paid. Right. And this is an this is an industry, and every there's there's a ton of people for whom if this thing dried up, they would be taking bread out of their own mouths, and nobody likes to do that. Nobody likes to take bread out of their own mouth to to cut off the generational wealth, quote unquote, for for their for their uh, uh, coming descendants, and that's one of the reasons that everybody. They're pushing it. 
Charlemagne, DJ NV, Power 105, BET, NAACP, these people could all say, we are not platforming any artist that engages in, in GMO music, guns, murder, or ops. And I throw in the B, H, you know, T, right? All the other negative words for women. They could say, we're not buying, promoting, glorifying any of it. They choose not to do that. Now, you, you know that they have standards. And, and, and this works one of, of a couple ways. One, you see, you see the, the quote unquote anti-Semitism route. So when Kanye said what he said about George Floyd and he talked about people, you know, uh, Jews in the media, they all closed ranks. The other way to get particularly the aristocracy to reject something is to put the people who are doing the negative behavior in Greek letters. If they're wearing Delta Sigma Theta, if they're wearing Omega Psi Phi, if they're wearing uh, Kappa Alpha Psi, then they say, oh, no, you, you can't represent us in our organizations that way. That's how they got sorority girls pulled off of VH1. And they, and they did that in a matter of weeks. But if it's, if it's out to the culture, generally speaking, these people don't care because, to, to be quite frank, the black elite is just as disconnected from the everyday black person as the white elite are. Right? They're control opposition. So their entire deal um, is, is to tell black folk that the primary threat to our existence is white supremacy. And this is why neither the Root nor the Griot will ever post a story about a black person getting killed unless they are famous, like a rapper. So, of course, they'll have some up on, on takeoff or unless they're killed by a white cop or vigilante. Anything else they see as adding to the, the, the racist trope of black on black crime, quote unquote. So it, it's, it's all about the dollar. And, and this is why, again, from the left or the right, you'll hear black folks saying, oh, these people have made people millions. And yeah, hip hop it has created industries, clothing, shoes, liquor, um, different endorsement deals, movies, media, books. And all of that would dry up if, if we, black folk, as a consumer base, were to ever say we are not allowing any more of this garbage and it's, and it's not other, pe- other communities' fault that they have higher standards than we do. Because Leo Cohen would never allow a video to be shot where, where his daughter, right, is, is twerking and shaking her butt in front of the camera. He would never allow his nephew in, the, in his yarmulke or his religious garb to be, to be filmed with a gun pointing at the camera. He would, sh- he would call it in and say, whoa, hold on, we're not doing this garbage. Cut it today. And then the artist would say, OK, yeah, we'll do that. He said, look, if you if you want to put your own people in these things, you could do that. But you're not putting my people in this by and hang up. And we accept that. So it's, it's not on them that they have high standards and we don't. I just want us to raise our standards and get this stuff out of the community. And if it stays, let it be relegated to insignificance like the insane clown posse. That, that's 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 the lane that all of this stuff should fill. It's, it's, a, it's a guilty pleasure. It's a Twinkie every other, every other month. It is not the, the basis of your diet. And people who think that it's not aligned to themselves. There's not a single church. There's not a single nonprofit. There's not a single college, PWI or HBCU that Snoop Dogg could not show up at today. He could even get gospel artists on a track with him. These same people will call Clarence Thomas a sellout and they wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. So that should tell you what, what you need to know about what we think is important and what we think is not. I certainly think it's on us to elevate our standards. Uh, and, 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 you know, we didn't support, I'm old enough to remember, we should have supported C. Dolores Tucker. Yes. Uh, and and, and others Calvin Butch that, that, just passed that away. called it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, 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 but what I'm trying to do, because it is on us, but I'm trying to say that us needs to include, encompass all of us that believe in God. And so that's what us should represent. And, and black people, obviously, yes, but us is anybody that believes in God, whether, again, Jew, uh, Catholic, Baptist, whatever, Islam, whatever. 
anybody that believes in God should be like, hey, this music damages our culture and damages other human beings and mm -hmm. is 10 times, a thousand times more damaging than some documentary that no one's going to watch and the handful of people that do watch it are going to decide within 10 minutes, this is some hot garbage, let me find something else to watch. I, that's what I'm trying to put pressure on yeah. is everybody, and, and that's why I'm progressive, secular elites. These left-wing Satanists, secular, they don't believe in God, and they got a bunch of money. All of us that are believers, even if you got money, <laughs> need to be telling these people, and that's where the pressure I'm trying to put on Jews but that believe in God is like, hey man, just like you need me to stand up and say, hey, this black on black violence is out of control and I do need to do that and I do it. I need you to say, hey, man, you guys were Lear Cohen. This is out of pocket. We're not accepting this because we believe in God and mm. we don't want to be represented in this way. And we don't want to see other people harmed in this way. And, and, and what what people do, ah, it ain't me. And if that's that group and they want to prostitute themselves out like that, that's on them. I think it's on us, believers in God. Proverbs 17, 15. Proverbs 17, 15 says, justifying wickedness and condemning the just is an abomination. Mm -hmm. So it's the job of Christians and Jews alike, since they believe in the Tanakh also, uh, to abide by that. You, you can't condemn the just and justify wickedness because that is abominable. Abominable is worse than a regular sin. So, you know. And and the the, and, the other. And, oh, go ahead, D. No, I, I was I was gonna say I, I agree with you completely. But again, this is almost like a chicken or the egg thing because Jason, you know this. Every time somebody, whether it's an elder in the black community, a concerned conservative who who happens to be white, has leveled even the slightest critique of hip hop in a public venue, you get 15 PhDs that pop up and tell that person either why they're wrong and don't understand the culture, this is if it's speaking to a black elder, or why they're racist. And this is when they speak to a white conservative. Like I've, I've seen Cameron and Damon Dash, this was years ago, on Bill O'Reilly's show, right? We've, we've seen artists speak to Oprah and Maya Angelou, and before that, see Dolores Tucker and, and Reverend Calvin Butts. So, but no, nobody, nobody's gonna stand up and, and offer criticism if they know that they're gonna get called racist for doing it. And part of the reason why, and, and this, this ties into your ideas about idolatry, is because hip hop, hip hop culture has become a golden calf for, for our community specifically. A lot of times people will try to, to, to deflect from this argument and say, oh, uh, white, white teenagers buy 70% of hip hop. One, I don't even know if that's accurate anymore because it's streaming platforms, so on and so on and so forth. But even if it is, there's a difference between music as art and music as lifestyle and culture. And we're talking about the culture. And right now, there are a lot of you go to any big city, Memphis, St. Louis, Baltimore, D.C., New York, Philly, and you'll see art imitating life and, and life feeding the art. So that you'll have dueling songs from different crews where guys will say, I shot your boy in the neck and I saw him bleed out. And, and honestly, if we're being honest with ourselves, a lot of the drum music um, sort of musically is garbage, complete garbage, right? And, and, they, and they couldn't talk about killing each other, it would, be, it would be nothing, it would be crickets. But we've created a golden calf out of that and it all ties back to money. And that's why anytime you hear somebody, the people with three names, the academics with three names start defending it, it's all about how much money and how much economic success is, is generated. But that's always for the artists. Because these guys moved from the South Bronx and Bedford-Stuyvesant in Harlem, and they moved to Greenwich, Connecticut. They were doing BLM before BLM was doing BLM. They pushed trapping on our kids, and they send their kids to private schools, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a facade. They, these guys are Nino Brown. They, they pump narcotics into the community, and then they give us a few trinkets and turkeys at, at Thanksgiving, and then they expect us to say thank you. And unfortunately, too many of us have been doing that for the last 30 years. This morning, I, I was talking about the takeoff murder and just hip hop culture, and the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama, 
the man, Stephen L. Reed, black dude, 48 years old, uh, you know, tweeted, la lazy take, but that's expected from you, gas lighter. And it's like the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama, is leaping to defend hip hop. And, and it, 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 it's. Last point I want to make, and I think both of y'all can relate to this, or maybe you can, maybe you can, I, I, I don't know, but people that are acting like this music has no impact, and again, maybe it's, maybe it's just me, but as I, I used to listen to a lot of hip hop, and, and when I listened to it, that was my steady staple diet of music. I spent a lot of nights in strip clubs listening to hip hop. I now listen to primarily 80% gospel. The other, another 10% probably is R&B, and then there's another 10% that's classic rock and roll. I don't go to strip clubs anymore. <laughs> there's, mm. there's a bunch of things that my mind used to think about constantly when I was listening to that garbage music. Once I started listening to gospel music, my mind started thinking about other things. And, and as I'm not sitting around, oh, I wonder what's going on at the strip club, I, none of that. And so th these people that are acting like, because you were talking earlier about, and I didn't know this, that on Instagram, Quavo was basically talking about we here and they were showing guns or whatever. Showing, the, the, the dude had a gun beside him, yep. Yeah, and so, there's a whole mindset that goes along with the music that gets put in you. And so when there is confrontation and that music is filling your spirit, you're not looking to diffuse the confrontation. Of, of course not. Everybody knows this, right? Uh, if, if, if anybody's close to my age, I'm 31. In the clubs, when slow music got played, people were dancing with women. When mm -hmm. Waka Flocka got played, people were fighting. When Crime Mob got play, played, people were fighting. The music literally dictated how people in the clubs would act. Anybody that knows this, not only that, if you talk to these drill rappers in Chicago, they tell you we are dying because of songs. They tell, they tell you this. They, you know, but nobody listens. So, of course, music has an influence on people. D, yeah. uh, I mean, thank you so much. Oh, go ahead. I'll give you, you can have the final word. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Jason, the, the people who try to argue that images don't matter unless you're talking about early 1900s, you know, minstrel posters and, and birth of a nation <laughs> and that words don't matter. Right. Uh, unless you talk, unless you're, you're talking about what Kyrie Irving says, these people are liars. They, they're lying and they have to know that they're lying. Because, again, I remember like what Bryson was saying, I'd be in college and, you know, the, the club about to let out. And if they plan knock if you buck or move B, get out the way, there's a good chance that a fight's going to break out. Now, if they was playing Melodies from Heaven or some other Kirk Franklin song, there's a lot less chance that a fight is going to break out. So th these people are so phony because even the ones who are not Christian, they'll tell you, oh, I'm doing my mindful moment and my meditation and I was in a restorative justice circle and words have uh, vibrational power. And then it and that's OK. So let's read these lyrics. Right. I woke up. I smoked the N word. I smacked the B word. Da, da, oh, that, that don't really matter. That's not that's not you. you, you uh, it's just it's just words. So that, that's my frustration. If these people were honest and I I would much rather deal with a dog than a snake. If they said, look, I'm black, but I grew up poor. And if you Negroes want to buy this music where I'm telling you to kill each other, that's on you because I'm going to take the money and I'm going to move, as I said, to Greenwich, Connecticut. And I'm going to have a nice Becky. I'm not going to take her out in public, but she's going to be in the house. And I'm going to let y'all fend for yourselves back in, you know, Bedford-Stuyvesant or East Memphis or the south side of Chicago. At least that person I could say, you know what? He's clear. He's calling the shot like Babe Ruth. He's swinging for the fences. He hit a home run. He made a, a bunch of money. He has no intention about caring for the community he comes from. But at least I know what he I understand what he's talking about. But it's the deception that aggravates me so much. And it's a deception that is that this spirit of deception has been uh, resting heavy on our community for the last 30 years. And that's the part that frustrates me. So, yes, they, they are liars. 
and, I, and I'm not afraid to say this because I've, I've been in restorative justice circles with people who on one hand is saying, oh, we got to We got to set the music right. And it's, it's got to and you, you played a little um, uh, it's like a little bo- glass bowl and you and you do the ding. And you say, oh, oh Jesus. and then and then these same people are going to tell me, oh, that if you listen to music where somebody's talking about shooting each other, that it doesn't matter. Get out of here. Jason, you know, if this was country music and this was in the 50s. And the artist was saying, I'm a hang me in today that the NAACP, SNCC, S- Southern Christian Leadership Council, all of them would be up in arms and saying we cannot allow this to go over the airwaves because it's conditioning white people to see us as less than human and to feel no uh, 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 guilt or sympathy when it comes to killing us. But if but if you transfer the, the, the family business from one party to the next and they say, look, We've owned for a long time. We're going to let you oversee because we know that if that if you are the one pushing it, that they'll accept it because representation matters to you people. So we'll, we'll put the business in your name. You'll make all the money. You'll front all the franchises, but it all it'll all come back to corporate headquarters. They know that we'll buy that. And I'm just asking how much longer we going to stand for that. Thank you, D. Great job. Thank as you always. Guys. Uh, Guys, I want to talk to you about the midterm elections. Election night is just around the corner, and the stakes have never been higher for the midterms. Several races across the country have gotten very interesting the past couple of weeks. Will Republicans be able to win a Senate seat in Washington State of all places? Is Kathy Hochul really in trouble in New York? Will voters punish Gretchen Whitmer for her COVID lockdown insanity and finally give her the boot in Michigan? There's a lot to cover this election cycle, and we've got you covered. Stu Bergier, who kind of serves as Blaze Media's resident cephologist. That's just a fancy, silly word that they put in front of me, but it all just really means uh, someone who studies elections. Well, he put together a comprehensive guide to let you know exactly what you need to look out for on election night. Head on over to blaze.com slash election guide to receive a free copy of Blaze Media's Ultimate Guide to the Midterms delivered straight to your inbox. Again, that's blaze.com slash election guide, and we will send you everything you need to know to be ready for the big election night. All right, you guys on youtube.com slash Jason Whitlock, hit the notification, subscribe, leave me a comment. Royce White, next. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to take a break from ranting and raving and share with you all uh, one of the greatest uh, things that has happened to me since I've been involved in the media. Uh, About a week ago, or exactly a week ago, I received this email that I'm about to share with you all. Uh, Hi, Jason. Thank you for being a man of God and not being afraid to speak the truth. I've been hearing your ads for preborn, and my heart breaks for our country and what we've been doing to these defenseless, precious babies. My wife is executor for her aunt's will, and we have chosen to send a check for $125,000 to preborn from the trust. Our prayer is that many hearts will be changed and our country will turn back to God Keep up the good work, Mark Gerber. I got this email a week ago. <clears throat> and it's, it's funny, I make fun of these ESPN guys for crying. <laughs> and, and half the time I wanna cry on this show, but nothing <clears throat> has hit me harder than getting that email and, and knowing that uh, what we're doing here And when I say we, I'm talking about the people that work on the show, but I'm also talking about you all, uh, the audience, that we are making a difference and and we are helping people along in their walk with God. Uh, We're inspiring people to support an organization like Preborn. Uh, You guys hear me talk about Preborn all the time on this show. You've seen me hop online and give money. And so I just, I wanted to bring Mark Gerber on the show 
uh, because we all did this, not just me, not just the people that work on the show, but the audience. We have clearly set an environment and created an atmosphere where people are being touched and moved. And, and I wanted to share this with you all, and I wanted to personally thank Mark Gerber uh, for giving me the highlight of my career. And I've been at this a long time, since 1990. This is the pinnacle of my career, uh, the donation that Mark and his wife have made here to Preborn. By our calculations, if you know, 80% of the women that receive an ultrasound that are contemplating uh, abortion or uh, terminating the pregnancy, 80% of those women when they receive an ultrasound uh, choose life and have the baby. And so by our calculations, Mark Gerber's donation gonna save about 4,000 babies' lives. It, it's, it's just incredible. And so uh, Mark Gerber, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you. Man, you've saved a bunch of lives and you've validated the purpose of, of my life and, and the work we're trying to do here. I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, if, if we could just hear a little bit about yourself, where, I don't know, anything, where you went to school, where you live, why you and your wife decided to do this, anything you're comfortable sharing, we'd just like to know a little bit more about you. Well, thanks for having me on, Jason. Uh, this is quite a, a privilege. I, uh, I've only been listening to you for a couple, three weeks, to be honest with you. I, uh, I heard you fill in on Glenn Beck's show a few months ago, and uh, your name stuck with me. And, and I just, you know, it's the, the Lord brought your name to me at the right time. I was looking for a new podcast to listen to, and uh, you came on and you start talking about preborn. And it was just something that struck my heart in a way that uh, I just, I knew that we had to do something and God's timing is perfect. You know, we, uh, with, I mentioned and you read about the will and we were getting ready to write checks in the will. She uh, requested that we give checks to, to charities. And so, but we had complete latitude on what to do with that money. But when you spoke and I heard the passion, there wasn't just, you weren't just reading a script. It was something that meant a lot to you, and 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 that softened my heart at the moment. That this is something we need to consider. So I told my wife about you and about the organization. We went on the website, and uh, she was all on board. Her name is Colleen, and she was on board to let's do this. And so uh, we're just happy to be part of it. I just it's not about me. It's not about us. You know, we just we're put in the right place at the right time to do something that hopefully will save many lives. You know. The thing about abortion, they say one life is lost, but there's another one wounded. And uh, the women that go through this, they're hurting for a lifetime if they don't come to terms with it. And so if we can avoid that, you know, that's even a bigger blessing. Well, Mark, uh, I, I just, your generosity uh, has so touched me and just has so, uh, again, you, you sit around and you're, I got a long media career. I've won s some really prestigious awards. Uh, none of it compares to being able to be involved with work that would touch someone to this level and for you to provide this kind of help. And it, it's inspiring, we wanna keep it going. I, I don't want anybody, we're not at any finish line, we're just along the journey and uh, Mark has put some gas <laughs> in our car and has really inspired and touched me. And so uh, I wanna thank you and your wife and, and uh, just, just thank you so much. And, and uh, I know that God is, is happy uh, that, that you and your wife were touched in this way. And uh, I, I, just, I just wanted to thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mark. We, uh, Mark, our favorite fearless soldier uh, we got to get Mark uh, to Nashville at some point. The guy's only been on watching the show for two or three weeks. How about those of you that have been watching for two or three months or 18 months? Uh, if you haven't, and again, Mark has just coughed up a big chunk of change. You don't have to do that. $28 will pay for an ultrasound. $10 will pay for 40% of an ultrasound. $100 or whatever you can afford, 
Preborn.com, go make a donation. Uh, I do, I'm sorry, just greed. I, there's a little spot in there where you can say, hey, I heard about this on Fearless with Jason Whitlock, and I, I, I do want that credit. Uh, it, it may be my greatest accomplishment uh, whenever, and it already is, just Mark and what we've already done. Uh, but thank you, Mark. Thank you, Fearless Soldiers. Please support Preborn. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to get back. I'm going to wipe these tears away and get back to Ram and Raven. Uh, next. Time to go deep uh, with Royce White. Royce, uh, can't wait to get uh, your take on uh, Kyrie Irving mm. and uh, the murder of Takeoff in Houston. We're going to start with Kyrie Irving because, uh, mm. and I want to play you and the audience this exchange Kyrie had uh, with an ESPN reporter about the Hebrews to Negroes documentary, and then we'll get your take, Royce. Let's play the clip. And to follow up on the promotion of the movie and the book. Can you please stop calling it a promotion? What am I promoting? Put it out on your platform. But I'm promoting it? Do you see me doing, do you see By me in front of the, it out there, the title? People are going to say that you are promoting. Yeah, I put promoting. it out there just like you put things out there, right? Yeah, but I, okay. I, it's not You put stuff. things out there for a living, right? Right, but my Great. stuff is Great. not so let's move on. filled let's with move on. anti-Semitic Let's stuff. move on. Don't dehumanize me up here. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing I'm that. Another You're human free being. to post I can what, post whatever I want, so say that what, and shut it down and move on to the next question. But Kyrie, you have to understand that by I don't have post, to understand anything from you. But, but it's Nothing. not me. Nothing. By it's no people that you're making you up, bro. Move on. But by posting move what on. you did. Move on. Next question. Any question. Do you guys have any more questions? And from they're me? gonna say. You guys have any more Does questions? Because this is gonna be a beliefs. clip. This is gonna be a clip that he's gonna marvel at. Is this any more questions? But you're not answering the question. Oh, this is another answering your question. Oh my God! Let's make another Instagram clip so we could be famous again. See, this is how the media controls things and and puts Kyrie in a spot. That reporter could have framed his question this way. Kyrie, you, you tweeted out the documentary, Hebrews to Negroes. Uh, what were you trying to convey? And uh, what do you think about Amazon and Jeff Bezos platforming the documentary? Now respond. But, but it's like, let's blame it all on the basketball player and let's put him in a spot. And I, I feel, because I, you know, I feel sorry for Kyrie I don't know who's in his camp, who's in his corner, but I'm telling you, the proper answer should, should have been, hey, Nick, take it up with Jeff Bezos and Amazon if you really have a problem with this. Why you're bringing it to me, a basketball player, makes no sense. The, que the, the line of questioning was ridiculous. It was clearly an ambush. Um, and, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I thought about it on the way over to the studio today about – about how I could even go at this, how I could even go at this whole controversy a layer a layer deeper. So if if I may, Jason, just let me let just let me go Please. all the way, because they you know we, our time it, it seems that our time is is limited, right? Our days are numbered in the in the areas that that we're that we're uh, moving around in in these conversations. So I might as well go all the way because because who knows? Um, the premise that the journalist wanted to start from really is that has nothing to do with the documentary. It really is linked back to a conversation around anti-Semitism and Al Bay, Kyrie Irving being a conspiracy theorist. Okay. Easy to do. Easy to do to the young black basketball player who's, you know, a bit quirky and a bit weird compared to the other players who just walk around like automatron robots in every interview they do. And, yeah, I think we need to pass the ball a little bit better, you know, next game. And we need to look out for each other. And be so it's easy to take Kyrie, the one guy who even has an original or authentic thought and go, this guy's crazy. All right, let's let's start here then. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence. 
on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Okay, that's John F. Kennedy. So let, let's just start the segment with Kennedy and say that John F. Kennedy was in agreement that there is a conspiracy, a, a monolithic, ruthless conspiracy. What now, now it's widely accepted that he was talking about communism, right? And let's take communism for a second, because I think people like this journalist who just get all of their political education from either some Marxist school or the headlines that come from some neoliberal Marxist institution uh, don't, don't understand this. Maybe they don't even know this. And, and I'm just giving them that, that space because I don't know these people personally. It, it would seem to me that so many of them are involved in these types of, of outlandish uh, worldviews that they do know exactly what they're doing. But let's just give them the benefit of the doubt in, in good faith. Communism was derived from Marxism. Communism in the modern form, which took the lives of hundreds of millions of people in many places around the world, was derived directly from Karl Marx. Who was Karl Marx? And this is what most Marxists never want to talk about. We're totally fine talking about Adolf Hitler being white, right? No, nobody has a problem with saying, hey, Adolf Hitler was a white man and, and all of the atrocities that he performed or that the founding fathers of America performed as Europeans and as white men, we need to account and attribute to white people. Nobody has a problem with that. Well, Karl Marx was a Jew. Now, I would make the case that he was actually an anti-Jew because I don't believe that you could be an ethnic Jew. But Karl Marx's father came from a long line of, of, of rabbis and they converted to Christianity to assimilate at the time, and then Karl Marx completely rejected God. So how can I not look at communism and all of the bodies stacked up from the communist uh, uh, political uh, structure or, or, or communist politics across history and attribute it back to the man who started it? And his ideas and then and then ask who he was. These are the types of bait and switch moves that the establishment has become great at. And, and to take it even a layer deeper. Communism, liberalism, globalism, same aim, same goal. OK, when when you when you draw back the curtain on communism, when you draw back the curtain on Marxism, when you draw back the curtain on Zionism. When you draw back the curtain on liberalism and globalism, you come back to one mountaintop, the crown. And it's obvious. It's obvious that the rebrand of the and again, the reason I start off with JFK, because anytime you play around in these waters where you talk about the crown and the monarchy or the international Zionist conspiracy, which isn't a conspiracy because Zionism is very uh, out there and, and, and blatant about what they mean, what they plan to do and what they're aiming to do. Um, anytime you talk about Freemasonry. The automatic is up, oh, turn it off. This guy's a conspiracy theorist. And that's what this guy really was trying to do to Kyrie Irving. Because what Kyrie Irving had done weeks before was talk about Alex Jones and the secret societies. And people looked at that and went, oh, this guy's crazy. No, he's not crazy. And they're not really secret societies. They're right out there in the open. And when I say the crown, Karl Marx came from Europe. He was, a, he was an anti-Jew. He didn't believe in God. His ideas spread throughout, created this class system. So what did the crown have to do in response to Marx and communism? They had to rebrand their globalist business model to, to make amends for the social pressure and the social wins that a Karl Marx and the communist uh, uh, class fair information, uh, uh, you know, uh, culture shift had taken. And that's exactly what they did. That's what the United Nations was. That's what the Bilderberg group was. That's what the Bretton Woods conference was. It took the crown's imperial globalist business model and it said, hey, 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 hey. got to be a little more race friendly, social justice, democracy. Social justice, democracy and environmentalism. 
And those are the three. That that was the rebrand right there. And it's sitting right before you. If you go to the, uh, the, the Grand United Lodge right now, which is the, the head Mason Lodge in the entire world, who's the, who's, the, who's the Grand Master? Prince Edward of Kent. It's right there. Who, 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 was, who, who was it that gave Israel the land that they have? It was the crown. <laughs> I mean, it's all right there for you. So the question now becomes, what good is it to have these conversations? Well, my only interest in these conversations is that there are no conversations that we shouldn't be able to have. And there certainly aren't any conversations we shouldn't be able to have about things that are factually true on a historical basis that we don't even have to go dig up some ancient text to pull up. We can just go look at what people are saying about their own actions right now. And for the media to shill like this at this level and go after Kyrie Irving and make him the scapegoat is a sign of the times. They want you to be distracted and, and they're almost mocking you. They're almost mocking you at home. They're saying, look, we run this show. We can point your attention and energy at anybody and any false false, uh, uh, you know, point that we want to. And, and that'll keep you busy because you're a jerk off anyway. You know, you, you're, you're mostly going to jerk off anyway. So in a little bit of time that you have a, an original or introspective thought, we know we can point it at Kyrie Irving and that's what they're doing. Wow. He's, he's set up. I told you when Royce comes on, it gets deep. Sometimes it gets so deep, it'll take me 48 hours to catch up. Facts, though. Uh, <laughs> he said facts. He also should have mentioned Karl Marx murdered a lot of Jews, too. A lot of, a lot of religious Jews, Karl Marx murdered them in the name of, in name of Marxism. He, he was an anti-Jew to the max. Yep. And, yep. and, and he's anti-guy. Like, he don't... Let's, let's, go, let's go a layer deeper here. Everybody wants to pretend that there's some consensus around this matter, this Jewish conversation. There's not a consensus amongst Jews in Israel. There's not even a consensus in Israel among, uh, about the about the legitimacy of Israel. And oh, you can't go there as a Republican candidate, as a conservative. Oh, you can't even speak about Israel. If you're not pro-Israel, then you're out. Well, guess what? W let's question the legitimacy of Israel. Let's just be honest. And here, I'll go another layer deeper. I believe in the preservation of Israel. Why? Because I'm a Jew. Okay? But I'm in total disagreement. I'm in total disagreement that people should be able to claim that they're an ethnic Jew and completely reject God in alignment in a string theory back to Karl Marx. That's completely illegitimate. And also what is completely illegitimate is the continued spread of the footprint of Israel from the time that it was the, of, of its inception. And you can look right on the map from 1949 until now, and, and the, the amount of land that the Palestinians have has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller over the decades to the point now where the Gaza Strip or the West Bank is this tiny little area. And, and, and the Zionists that the black hats openly criticized in Israel have continued to move into land that is not theirs. Now, they make the claim that and here's here's how crazy this gets. When you really get deep down into the political conversations deep enough, the Zionists, they make the claim that there's no such thing as the Palestinian people. They're not a people. Where have we heard that before? Where have we heard that a certain group of others is not a people? Fetuses aren't a people. At one point, black people weren't people, which is also happened in Israel as well. By the way, don't forget, Donald Sterling said on the record, in Israel, the black Jews are treated like dogs. And he was right. And many people in Israel say that about Israel. Because there were black Jews that came to Israel when Israel opened up. They brought black tribes that had spread out throughout the diaspora back into Israel. So the black people are treated like dogs in Israel. They're treated like dogs in China. If you're not Chinese, you're not human either. We see this across the spectrum of, of governance and, and institutions and governmental uh, um, agencies that try to other certain people and justify their tyranny. And Israel is a perfect example. But you can't even speak about Israel or else you're anti-Semitic. Well, let's just talk about it. They never let you they never let you hear what the black cats have to say. They never let you hear what the holy religious Jews, real Jews that live in Israel, have to say about the state of Israel or about Zionism. And they try. The, the, this is what makes, makes Kanye West so right. 
yeah, he fumbles over things a little bit and he may not say it the most articulate way. And he may not have all the geopolitical references and information to 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 call upon when he's explaining what he's explaining. But what makes him more right than the music business uh, uh, motif or the Hollywood is this right here. They never give you a holy religious viewpoint of Israel of, of Israeli Jews. They only give you the Zionist viewpoint that the Palestinians are terrorists, that the Palestinians have not basically, uh, you know, uh, cut out of the entire equation will always be a threat to Israel. And, and, and that, you know, the people in Israel are happy with a secular uh, Zionist uh, is Israeli movement and nothing could be further from the truth. I get messages every day since we started having this conversation from black hats and people who are religious Jews who say, continue to push that envelope because for some reason we don't get a voice here in Israel. Fact check me. I dare anybody at home to fact check me. Go look up the holy religious Jews, the black hats, and see what they have to say about this entire anti-Semitism and Zionist conversation, and then come back to us. The majority of Israel are secular. The majority of people in Israel are secular Jews, so he is right. I did not know that. That's what my mouth just dropped. I, I, I did... It, it's, uh, hold for a second. Not that I don't believe you, but... Uh, Royce, is that true? The majority of Israel is non-religious Jewish people? I would say that as it stands today, what, what, what they try to do is create a representation of the Jewish community and their beliefs on these political matters that excludes a very observant religious minority. The rabbis, the black cats, the people that actually keep the Sabbath holy in Israel. Yes, they are a minority in Israel, but they are the majority in, in thought. They're the silent majority when it comes to holy religious communities of Jews around the world. So anywhere where you find religious Jews who observe and actually practice the faith, they have a, a, a common a common belief or a common agreement on these matters. But yet a hundred percent Tel Aviv is one of the most LGBTQ places in the entire world. It's not by accident. And it's not by accident that Amy Dean, you know, and, and, and Takoon magazine said that the Jews are responsible for gay marriage. Now, if you say that as a, as a, as a non Jew, then you're anti-Semitic. Well, I'm a Jew, so I can say it, but yeah, Amy Dean goes right on the record and says, Hey, we, we secular Jews here in America, the, the, the political Jewish uh, lobby, the ADL, we're largely responsible for the advancements of gay marriage. So the whole, but the whole claim is that there's nothing wrong with gay marriage. So, you know, they don't see a problem with that. But you can't even talk about that as a, as a, as a, as a historical fact without being labeled anti-Semitic. Kyrie Irving's just in the crosshairs. And you know what else, do you know what else I really dislike about this whole deal? is because I know that it's not by accident that Kyrie Irving or Kanye West, or when I was in Nashville, remember I said about Colin K. It's not by accident that the people who have gained access to these platforms and end up being uh, cornered in these positions that have to defend these highly intellectual and historical geopolitical issues never seem to be able to articulate them full circle. It's not by accident. It's almost like they hedged their bets on both sides. It's like, yeah, we'll let y'all in to a certain extent, but we're going to make sure that not one of you could articulate these issues full circle. And I don't think that's by accident. And maybe it's not a conscious decision by certain power people in the establishment, but let's go to the metaphysical then. Right. Satan's totally fine with, with, with a metaphysical conspiracy as well, which is also something that's roped off. If, if you can't talk about God, then there's no such thing as a metaphysical conspiracy. There's nothing that links all of these things. And like I said on Friday, liberalism, communism, globalism, one thread, one goal, removal of God from the organization of man. And look at what all of them have done. Liberalism, you got radical materialism. Communism, you got a radical uh, tyrannical state. And globalism says the only way that people can get along in the world is if we have one global governance. Ultimate anti-God scam. Facts. <sighs> man, oh man. I, got I know a lot my Twitter's coming. About. My Twitter's getting taken down this week. I already know. I can feel it coming. <laughs> I, and I'm just sitting here. I'm thinking about Dr. Zelensky that 
took care of me when uh, I got COVID. Zelenko, uh, Zev Zelenko. Zelenko, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, when I got COVID, and why we hit it off so strong, deeply religious man, we talked about God, you know, that was our bond or whatever, you know, he passed away, he was, you know, when he was taking care of me and prescribing me the stuff, when I got COVID, he was already sick and knew, you know, he was probably short on time. Yeah. And so, and my perception of most Jewish people is that they're religious. And, and <laughs> that, that I thought they were the majority. No. And that pe people like Zelenko that I hit, like, that's my perception of no. Jewish people. I, oh, no. Mm. Mo 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 most are secular. If, if you talk to most of them, they don't keep the Sabbath holy. They, they don't keep the commandments. They don't keep the commands of God. Half of these half of people don't even know anything about the Torah. They probably don't. Have, a lot of people probably don't even know it's the 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 Old Testament is called the Tanakh. This is that, that's why it's so far. It's like Lyra Cohen. All these people were talking about the reason we use the term secular in front of them because they're not religious Jews. They do not abide by anything of God. They don't like God. I thought they were the minority, though. Oh no, no. you can't. Uh, no, no. Uh -uh, no. So I don't, I don't think you can find one of these secular Jews, the people that run the industry. I don't think you can find one that is a religious Jew. No, none of them are Jew. They, Jason, this is what I was trying to say the other day. I, I wasn't just saying it to be facetious or to be, you know, controversial. It is my opinion that you cannot be an ethnic Jew solely. And all of these people, most of them, at, at the majority of them, have openly rejected God. And 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 so. And to tell you that Zev Zelenko was one of two people that endorsed me for Congress. I had a very good relationship with Zev Zelenko and he was a holy man. He was a very, very brilliant and, and spiritual holy man. And guess what he did? He went to the high rabbinical court during COVID and he begged them not to bend the knee on the vaccine. He said, this is going to be the way that they kill the Jews in the future, this is going to be the way I know that's going to get that's probably going to get me deplatformed. But Zev Zelenko went and pleaded with the high rabbinical court of holy Jews. And guess what they said? They were like, I think they were split on it. You know, half of them were like, yeah. And then the other half were like, nah. Right. But but they, but he he did that in his in his final days, in his final years. And, and he was he is a very holy man, but he is a minority. Um, but but it's not just the Jews. Let's be clear. When I say they're anti-Jews, this is what makes them anti-Jews. Because they claim to be Jews, but they reject God. Okay? They, they, they don't believe in Judaism. They're, they're not Jews. Now, if you're a Christian, or if you say you're a Christian, but... Tell it. If you say you're a Christian and you reject God, you're an anti-Christian. If you say you're a Muslim, but you reject Allah, you're an anti-Muslim. So this ain't just about Jews, but there is a, a, a nomenclature around this whole conversation where one group is just parsed out for World War II. And let's let's talk about World War II. And if we accept what I said on Friday, that the, the Jewish people, the real Jews, carry the single greatest record of the covenant between God and Abraham, then World War II and the Holocaust was more heinous than we could possibly imagine, than a secular society could give it credit for. They talk about the Holocaust, but they don't really understand the spiritual implications because they don't believe in the spiritual. The Jews lost their faith after the Holocaust, by and large. That was, that was the advent of secular Judaism. The, after World War II and the Holocaust, the Jews said, how could this have happened to us? And then they used that event to, to legitimize and justify the institution of Israel as a state. And that's why many of the black cats in Israel and the holy religious Jews don't believe in the legitimacy of Israel because they say that World War II was not the, the, um, was not the event that was prophesied in the Bible where the Messiah will come back and that the Jews will be brought back into grace. That, that they don't recognize the World War II or the Holocaust as that. But the secular Jews say... It doesn't matter what you religious Jews believe. This happened to us in reality. Forget all the fairy tale stuff that happened before. Forget Moses. 
We don't need to talk about Moses or Abraham or any of that. That's, that's fiction. What we know is that we were killed and genocided and that and, and why would God let this happen? And you know what? I understand it. I understand it deeply. But doesn't change the fact. Doesn't change the fact that that was, a, 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 you know, an event horizon where the Jews lost their faith, where many Jews lost their faith. And only a remnant remain of the Jews. And I and I, I would di- I would be disrespectful to the way that they lived their life and the way that they um, uh, the way that they observe the faith. If I called them the other people Jews. Now there are now here's the, the difference between the Jews and the anti Jews and the Christians and the anti Christians. If you say you're a Christian, there aren't many people who are Christian who openly say that they don't believe in God or that they reject the existence of God. That's not that's not their common. actions though. No, their their no, actions. Don't get me wrong. Scream it to the. Anytime, anytime I hear Raphael Ward, and I talk, I'm a pro life or a pro choice pastor. Yes. That's yes. a man that he's not a Christian. He's, he's faking the funk. But he's not an anti Christian either. What he is is a Christian. He's a, he's a Christian in name only. And there is a difference. I know. Because there, there's a significant difference in that. And there are many Muslims who you who take the Lord's name in vain. You and I talked about this all the time. There are many Muslims and Christians who take the Lord's name in vain, who use the faith and the religion as a way to re- uh, wage tyranny on other groups of people. We know that. Nobody with good sense would deny that. But they don't openly reject the existence of God. And there's a difference in there. Because if you accept that God exists, no matter what you've done in this world, you can ask for forgiveness. And that's not a nothing issue. If you're a secular hundred percent and you don't believe in the existence of God, how could you ever ask for forgiveness? And that's something that is exclusive to the secular Jewish community. They reject the existence of God completely and outright. So there's, there's just a, you know, it's just a minor uh, nuance and detail, but it, but it, but it is important to, to, to make, to make note of. So you got a bunch of anti-Jews, but you got a bunch of Christians in name only and Muslims in name only, and they're all in on it together. Well, let's be honest. The black bourgeois, here's the here's the railhead of Western New World Order, of American, Democrat, globalist, neoliberal, Marxist politics. The black bourgeoisie first. Let's never not mention them. So you can't say that I'm picking on the Jews because the first people I'm always going to go after is the black bourgeoisie. And don't tell me they're not the bourgeoisie because they're in the upper class and bourgeoisie means middle class because in our society across the entire plane, Having a billion dollars is is the the middle tier of the upper tier. Okay, they're the go between. So the black bourgeois disease always needs to be mentioned first because they're the sine qua non of sellouts. And this little movie here, the black Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites, you can make the argument. <laughs> you can make the argument as a tangent. You can make the argument, a completely sound argument, that there's no bigger group of sellouts than the black Israelites. All of these black Israelite pan, I told you the other day how sick all these pan-African black Israelite, you know, fake woke people make me. Because you can make the argument that they are the biggest sellouts. Because guess what? The Ashkenazi Jews, at least they had the balls to, to die for their beliefs. At least they had the balls to actually die for practicing the faith. That's why they were genocided. That's why they were, that's why there was a Holocaust in World War II, because they stood on their identity and said, most of them stood on their identity and was like, no, 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 we're Jews. OK. And they walked to the chamber and they were massacred in the chamber. And that's 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 a horrible, horrible atrocity that can never be undone. But the black Hebrew Israelites, since the time that that tribe broke off from Judah, they've been selling. They've been selling out the whole time. That's why there's barely any. Uh, uh, there's, that's why there's barely um, a, a visible a visible remembrance of them. There's, there's, there's barely any uh, way to recognize them anymore. That's why the people in this documentary had to go back and do jump through all these hoops to tie in languages and village practices and remains from here or there, because we sold out the most and it's just as true today. So you got the black bourgeoisie, you got the anti-Jews, you got the LGBTQ and you got the radical feminists. Boom. Those four people, those four groups are the railhead for American uh, uh, globalist politics. Royce, you've given me a bunch of homework. Great job as always. Uh, I, I love it. Also, he talked about, uh, I saw him on Twitter talk about a march. He told Kanye we do a march for yeah. God. 
And I said, bro, if we do a March for God, I'm there. A March for a Million Man, March for God. Do you know how much, you know what kind of message that was saying? We definitely need to do that. Man. Thank you so much. Uh, listen, play tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just want to have freedom. Sitting on the corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving all the seed when we all want to be free. We want freedom. I just want I wanna be, I just